Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and today we're going to take a look at a new game that's set to release in July called Immortal Planet. Keep in mind that I'm playing a beta copy of the game though, so this is not the final product. I initially played the game with a mouse and keyboard. The game itself recommends playing with a controller, and when I switched over to one, it felt so much better, so definitely play it with a controller. Immortal Planet's a top-down 2D isometric action game that's set in a frozen, desolate planet that's shrouded in mystery. So the character you play as is called an Awake Walker. You're an immortal being that's been awakened from cryosleep with no memory of your past as you begin to explore the planet. You will very quickly find hostile sleepless warriors whose mind have been eroded by eternity and they will attack you on sight and these guys are not friendly. The story starts off really vague and mysterious. Um... Uh, okay. Okay? But the further into the game you venture, the more the game feeds you tidbits of information and lore. The game's description says it features Souls-like progression, and this is definitely true. If you're a fan of the Soulsborne series, then you'll be very familiar with the gameplay mechanics that Immortal Planet has to offer. That means I'm going to be referring to Dark Souls a lot, because there's definitely a lot of inspiration from their game mechanics. And I don't say that in a bad way, because for the most part, it works. So for example, you have your health and you have your stamina. Every action uses stamina, so you have to time your attacks and dodges strategically to defeat the hostile enemies that wander the planet. When you kill the bad guys, you gain experience that you can spend at resting points to level up. Just like in Dark Souls, every time you die to an enemy, you'll respawn at the last checkpoint, you'll lose all of your experience points, and of course all the enemies have respawned too. Of course you can run back to where you died and recollect your experience. This also heals your character, so it actually adds a layer of strategy to pick it up when you're in a tough situation, which works great for boss fights and enemies that you're struggling with. If you die before you collect your experience, say goodbye to that hard-earned EXP, just like in Dark Souls. But I did notice there's a nice exception that when you inevitably fuck up and die before collecting any experience, your original respawn point and sweet sweet EXP will still remain. It is until you kill an enemy though. After that, you're hosed if you die, so you gotta be careful out there. The combat also plays out a lot like Dark Souls if it were a 2D isometric top-down game, of course. You can't just swing away and kill enemies. Each one can easily take you out if you're not being careful. You can exhaust all your stamina very quickly if you're not careful, so you need to be thoughtful when attacking so you can dodge or block and avoid taking damage if necessary. So in the beginning of the game, you get to choose between three weapons and three relics. My favorite weapon was definitely the Sword Spear. It just looked cooler in my opinion, and it felt better than the other choices. The relics just add a subtle status effect bonus for your character. I didn't see it really impacting me in any major way though. Now each weapon has two forms. When you hold down the attack button, you'll transform it into a secondary form, changing the attack damage, speed, and range. This gives you some variety in how to fight enemies and opens up combat choices as well. For example, when I change my sword spear into its secondary mode, you guessed it, it looks like a spear instead of a sword. You're also going to find secondary items and spells quickly that each have different effects. For example, you find a rifle that does small amounts of damage, but you can target specific enemies so you can pick them off one by one safely instead of having to fight a group of two or three. You also get a ball of electricity to zap enemies and stun them briefly. It does a little bit of damage, but it also gives you a short window of opportunity to attack them. Through the brief amount of time I played, I did find a lot more items, but I didn't have the required stats to try them out. These items make you consider how you want to upgrade when you're leveling up your character, that way you can build them out to your specific playstyle. The level design itself is pretty tight. It's straightforward enough with a little bit of room to explore. When you progress through levels, you unlock shortcuts that make it easy to backtrack, which is really nice for when you want to level up and it resets the mobs, you can get back where you left off very quickly. The starting level works more as a tutorial for the basic controls, and you encounter a few different enemy types that each have their own behavior when you fight. It gives you a good feel for what to expect from the different enemies in the game. You think you're getting the hang of it, and before you know it, you encounter your first boss battle. These guys are tough, and you have to be really careful, or you can get killed very quickly. After you defeat the first boss and clear the starting area, you'll have some options to different paths you can take, though the game does a good enough job directing where you should technically go. I will say this, the game is really fun, but damn is it hard. Fuck. Shit! <laughs> God damn it! Fuck. Oh. I wouldn't say the game is exactly perfect. It definitely has a few flaws to it. Uh, for example, I think the stamina runs out just a little too quickly. I know this is something you can upgrade, 
but even just a couple swings, you have to wait for it to recharge before you can attack again. And I'd say this is where it becomes a little bit of an issue. You don't want to use all of your stamina. You want to have just enough to dodge an attack just in case, because even the basic enemies can take me down to at least a quarter of my health easily. If you accidentally swing one too many times, you're left almost completely vulnerable. Very early on in the game, you get a healing item, but it only has one charge by default. You can find more in chests, but anytime you die or rest to level up, you lose any of the extra ones. Now this would be fine, except sometimes when you're close to death and you try to pop your only health item, you get hit and it stops healing you at that point. I've had numerous times where in a panic I tried to heal only to be hit and not regain any health, and wasting my only healing item. Oh yeah, that's right. You can also dodge off ledges like an idiot and die instantly. Oops. Once you get your ass handed to you a few times. Ugh. Shit. Fuck. God. A lot of times, you'll hopefully make it to the area's boss. And these guys are fucking vicious. Not only do they have a ton of health, but they're able to two or three shot me easily. And once you're at that point, it's almost impossible to recover your experience from where you last died and be able to make it back to a save point to level up. And if you're not careful, you're probably going to die on your way back to the boss a few times. Now I know what you're thinking and I know I should just get good, but I feel like I was doing pretty decent while playing, but the enemies just did so much damage and you have to use your heals very sparingly. There are a lot of times when I died I felt like it wasn't very fair, but in hindsight pretty much every time it was a death I could have avoided if I had just fought more carefully and a little more patiently. So just like Dark Souls, if you're not looking for a game that's going to make you its bitch while you fight your way through it, you're probably going to have a bad time. My only other minor gripe is that throughout the entire time I played, I didn't find any other main weapons to equip. Other than your basic attacks on each form of your weapon, it didn't seem like there was too much variety with it. I'm sure you'll find more eventually, but I also think it's nice to have a little bit more variety towards the start of the game. Don't get me wrong though guys, overall Immortal Planet is an absolutely gorgeous 2D game, and I really did enjoy playing it. So if you're a glutton for pain and like a good challenge, I think this game would be a perfect fit for you. Alright, let's... what is that? Oh, God. Ugh, here we go. Fuck. 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 Shit. Come on, you piece of shit. Fuck. Yes! Oh, finally! God! With an intriguing but vague story and a difficulty that feels so rewarding when you finally get past the next challenge, I think this game is definitely one to look out for when the game is finally released around the end of July. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more reviews, first impressions, and funny Let's Play videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and let me know in the comments section below what upcoming indie games you're looking forward to playing later this year. I'd love to hear about it. As always guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.